Hare Krishna everyone, so we are continuing with teachings of Queen Kunti by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. It's a beautiful book which gives commentary on the prayers of Queen Kunti from Srimad Bhagavatam. And we are Shravanam Diaries Podcast, I'm your host Tulalita Devidasi and we are starting chapter 13 today. The Vital Force of the Universe. Hmm. Janma karma cha vishvatman ajasya karturatmanah tiryan rishishu yadakshu tadatyanta vidambanam Of course, it is bewildering, O son of the universe, that you work, though you are inactive, that you take birth, though you are the vital force and unborn. You yourself descend among animals, men, sages, and aquatics. Verily, this is bewildering. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.8.30 Purport The transcendental pastimes of the Lord are not only bewildering, but also apparently contradictory. In other words, They are all inconceivable to the limited thinking power of the human being. The Lord is the all-pervading Supersoul of all existence, and yet He appears in the form of a boar among the animals, in the form of a human being as Rama, Krishna, etc., in the form of a Rishi like Narayana, and in the form of an aquatic like a fish. Yet, it is said that he is unborn and he has nothing to do. In the Shruti Mantra it is said that the Supreme Brahman has nothing to do. No one is equal to or greater than him. He has manifold energies and everything is performed by him perfectly by automatic knowledge, strength and activity. All these statements prove without any question that the Lord's activities, forms and deeds are all inconceivable to our limited thinking power. And because He is inconceivably powerful, everything is possible in Him. Therefore, no one can calculate him exactly. Every action of the Lord is bewildering to the common man. He cannot be understood by the Vedic knowledge, but he can be easily understood by the pure devotees, because they are intimately related with him. Jai. The devotees therefore know that Although he appears among the animals, he is not an animal, or a man, or a rishi, or a fish. He is eternally the Supreme Lord in all circumstances. Kunti addresses Krishna as Vishvatman, the vital force of the universe. In everyone's body there is a vital force. That vital force is the Atma, the living being, the living entity, the soul. It is because of the presence of that vital force, the soul, that the whole body works. Similarly, there is a supreme vital force. That supreme vital force is Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, where is the question of his taking birth? Supreme vital force. I don't want to make any false statements, but seems to me that may the force be with you has something to do with Srila Prabhupada's books. I'm sorry, every time I read how Srila Prabhupada, he, he, um, he has given this concept of the force in the 60s and then Sometime later, somebody picked it up and it became 
kind of a well-known statement may the force be with you and everything about the force so everything has its roots in the supreme lord and in god so this concept that many people found very very attractive it's actually originally it's in Shri Prabhupada describes it it is there the supreme vital force and that is krishna so may krishna be with you with all of us <laughs> Hare krishna therefore where is the question of his taking birth in bhagavad gita 4.9 the lord says janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tatvataha tyaktva deham punar janma Quote, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. In this verse, the word divyam especially indicates that the Lord's appearance and activities are spiritual. And elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Ajopi san avyayatma. The word Aja means unborn. And Avyayatma means not subject to destruction. This is the nature of Krishna whose transcendental nature is further described by Kunti Devi in her prayers to the Lord. In the beginning of her prayers, Kunti Devi said to the Lord, You are within and you are without, but still you are invisible. Krishna is within everyone's heart. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridasher Junatishthati Sarvasya Chaham Hridisanya Vishtah. Indeed, he is within everything, even within the atom. Andantarastha Paramanu Chayantarastham. Krishna is within and he is without. Thus, Krishna showed Arjuna his external feature as the Vishvarupa the gigantic cosmic manifestation. This external body of Krishna is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. There the hills and mountains are described as the bones of the Lord. Similarly, the great oceans have been described as different holes in the Lord's universal body. And the planet known as Brahmaloka has been described as the upper portion of his skull. Those who cannot see God have been advised to see him in many ways, in terms of the material cosmic manifestation, according to the instructions given in the Vedic literature. <clears throat> there are those who can simply think of God as being great but do not know how great he is. When they think of greatness, they think of very high mountains, the sky and other planets. Therefore, the Lord has been described in terms of such material manifestations, so that while thinking of these different manifestations, one can think of the Lord. This is also Krishna Consciousness. If one thinks, this mountain is the bone of Krishna, or if one thinks of the vast Pacific Ocean as Krishna's navel, one is in Krishna consciousness. Mm. Similarly, one may think of the trees and plants as the hairs on Krishna's body. One may think of Brahmaloka as the top of Krishna's skull. And one may think of the Patala Loka, planetary system, as the soles of Krishna's feet. Thus, one may think of Krishna as greater than the greatest. 
Mahato Mahiyan. Similarly, one may think of Krishna as the smallest of the smallest. That is also a kind of greatness. Krishna can manufacture this gigantic cosmic manifestation and he can also manufacture a small insect. In a book, one may sometimes find a small running insect, smaller than a period. This is Krishna's craftsmanship. <laughs> I like this. Krishna's craftsmanship. Anoraniyan Mahato Mahiyan Katha Upanishad 1.2.20 He can create something greater than the greatest and smaller than the smallest. Now, human beings have manufactured the 747 airplane, which according to their conception is very big. How can they but how can they produce an airplane as small as a flying insect? That is not possible. Actual greatness, however, is not one-sided. One who is actually great can become greater than the greatest and smaller than the smallest. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm. Jai. That's sweet because I was also thinking about uh, how Krishna, he is also the greatest of the greatest, but he is also very humble. So one who is just very, very great all the time. It's not, like Prabhupada says, it's not one-sided. One who is actually very great, he can also be very small. Hmm. Smallest of the smallest. I like this. But even the great things man can manufacture in the modern age are still not the greatest things man has created. We have information from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which we're going to read sometime later, perhaps this year. We have information from the Srimad Bhagavatam that Kardama Muni, the father of the great sage Kapila Deva, manufactured a huge plane that resembled a great city. It included lakes, gardens, streets and houses, and the whole city was able to fly all over the universe. In that plane, Kardama Muni traveled with his wife and showed her all the planets. Showed her all the planets. He was a great yogi, and his wife Devahuti was the daughter of Svayambhuva Manu, a great king. Kardama Muni had desired to marry, and Devahuti told her husband, My dear father, I want to marry that sage. Thus, Svayambhuva Manu brought his daughter to, Kapil, Kapil, to Kardama Muni. He brought his daughter to Kardama Muni and said, Sir, here is my daughter, please accept her as your wife. She was a king's daughter and was very opulent, but when she joined her austere husband, she had to serve so much that she became lean and thin. In fact, even with insufficient food, she was working day and night. Thus, Kardama Muni became compassionate. This woman who has come to me is a king's daughter, he thought. But under my protection, she is not receiving any comfort. So I shall give her some comfort. Thus, he asked his wife, What will make you comfortable? A woman's nature, of course, is that she wants a good house, good food, fine garments, good children, and a good husband. These are a woman's ambitions. Thus, Kardama Muni proved to her that she had received the best husband. Aww. The yo by yogic powers, by yogic powers, he created for her this great airplane and gave her a big house 
with maid servants and all opulences. Kardama Muni was merely a human being, but he could perform such wonderful things by yogic powers. Hmm. Heads up to may the force be with you. Krishna, however, is Yogeshvara, the master of all yogic powers. If we get a little mystic power, we become important. But Krishna is the master of all mystic powers. Master. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that wherever there is Yogeshvara, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all mystic powers, and wherever there is Arjuna, who is also known as Partha or Dhanur Dhara, everything is present. We should always remember that if we can keep ourselves always in company with Krishna, we shall attain all perfection. And especially in this age, Krishna has incarnated as the holy name. Kali Kali Nama Rupa Krishna Avatara Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi 17.22 Therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says Nam Nama Kari Baudha Nija Sarva Shaktis Tatra Arpita Niyamita Smarane Nakalaha Quote, My dear Lord, you are so kind that you are giving me your association in the form of your holy name. And this holy name can be chanted in any situation. Unquote. There are no hard and fast rules for chanting Hare Krishna. One can chant Hare Krishna everywhere, anywhere. Children, for example, also chant and dance. It is not at all difficult. While walking, our students take their beads with them and chant. Where is the loss? But the gain is very great. For by chanting, we associate with Krishna personally. Haribo, suppose we were to associate personally with the president. How proud we would feel. Oh, I am with the president. <laughs> So, should we not feel very much proud if we were to associate with the Supreme President, who is able to create many millions of presidents like those of this world? This chanting is our opportunity to do so. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Etadrisheta Vakripa Bhagavan Mamapi My dear Lord, you are so kind to me that you are always prepared to give me your association. But I am so unfortunate that I do not take advantage of this opportunity. Our Krishna consciousness movement is simply requesting people. Chant Hare Krishna. There was a cartoon in some newspaper that depicted an old lady and her husband sitting face to face. The lady is requesting her husband, chant, 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 and the husband is answering, can't, 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 I can't, can't, can't. So in this same way, we are requesting everyone, please chant, 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 but they are replying, can't, can't, can't. This is their misfortune. Still, it is our duty to make all such unfortunate creatures fortunate. That is our mission. Therefore, we go into the street and chant. Although they say can't, we go on chanting. That is our duty. Jai, so let's chant. One time, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, chant, chant, chant. Hare Bol, thank you so much for tuning in today, we're going to stop here. 
and the link to this book is in the description. Please visit our website shravanamdiaries.com where you can find the entire list of episodes that we have, all the books that we have read so far. And please read them, share them with your friends. May the supreme force be with you. And yes, we'll see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.